our scripture reading this morning is taken from Hebrews 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and servants flames of fire. But about the Son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, a scepter of justice and will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Set at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? You know, this morning, we're going to talk about the miracle of the message. And I was thinking how I wanted to convey this to you this morning. This message from God is so important. You know, when I got to thinking in the past, I knew I'd do that sometimes. I got this thinking about the years I spent in the school system. And I worked in many rooms. In fact, I worked in some of the first rooms with learning disabled and, and, and challenged kids that was in this district. And, and you know, some of the problems that they had, not only the many problems they had, were many of these children were deaf. And I, I thought, oh, wow, you know. How do, you, how, do you, how do you speak to them? How do you get your message through to them, you know? And I would watch some of the para-educators, and I would also watch the parents when they came into their classroom. And they would sit there using sign language, and they would talk to their children. And the children would listen so intently. It was a very personal type of communication. But you know what impressed me was the fact that they were understood. The kids understood them and the parents understood their children. They overcame what we might view as a dysfunction or liability. They overcame that and were able to hear the message. And as I watched that, and as I thought about that in preparation for this sermon, I just couldn't help but reflect on the significance of what God has done for us. I saw in that experience with those deaf children a living parable. You know, we are here on earth, busy, we're living our lives, so busy, pursuing our own agendas. But we are deaf to God's voice. We are deaf to His voice. We don't hear what God is trying to say to us. God has been trying to communicate His message to us, but we aren't listening. We aren't getting it. But rather than give up in frustration, what has our God done? Our God loves us so much that He constantly <coughs> wants to reveal Himself to us. He 
wants to do it in ways that we can understand. So he sends a servant <coughs> alongside to communicate in the message, to communicate his message in a way that we can understand. That is the miracle of Christmas. That is the miracle of the message. You know, our Christmas series as we go through, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things, but without the message, there is no Christmas. We don't know about the true miracle. We need to experience the miracle in our own hearts and our own lives. You know, today, we just want to focus entirely upon that message, God's message. And so, we started last week with the movie, The Miracle on 34th Street. And we're going to look at that again today to help us to understand this miracle, help us to maybe look at it in a way that we haven't seen it before. So in today's clip from the movie, and it's not a long one, I want you to notice how Chris Pringle interacts with a little girl who has come to the store to see Santa. Part of the plot is that the daughter of Mrs. Walker doesn't believe in Santa Claus. And she witnesses Chris, Chris Pringle, communicating with this little girl in a way that that little girl could understand. So let's watch this clip. Well, how are you? Um, well, she's deaf. You don't have to talk to her. She just wanted to see you. Thank you. You are very beautiful. He spoke to the Israelites from the smoking fire on the mountain. 
He spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. He spoke to Isaiah in a vision in the temple. God spoke to Hosea through his family. And to Amos in a basket of summer food. You know, God spoke to so many people in so many ways. He didn't just give us one or two ways to hear his message. God used everything available to him to bring this message to us, this Christmas message. He's been doing this so that he might communicate with us on our level. Just as Santa reached the deaf girl on her level. God's not speaking up here. God is speaking right here directly to us. All we have to do, like the little deaf girl, is pay attention. You know, prior to the coming of Christ, there was 400 years of silence. Since the prophet Malachi last ever his messages from God, there were no prophets until John the Baptist arrived. You know, there were just some occasional mentions here and there, just fragments, but no single one of them contained the whole truth. They could not accurately capture the nature of God. But finally, finally, like now at last, God has sent his son to bring his message to us. The Lord Jesus Christ, God has revealed himself directly through us, through Jesus. You know, Jesus is the living, divine son of God. Scripture says, who has seen me has seen the Father. How much clearer can God make that message to us? He wants to make himself understood in ways that we can understand. He says in the scripture that the Son is the radiance of God's glory. He says it's the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. But you know what? The miracle of the message is not just that God speaks to us through his son, but that that message has the power to transform our lives. Christmas is a celebration of the greatest message that was ever proclaimed. God is with us. God came near, so near to us that we can draw near to him. 1 Timothy 2.6 says that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for all. The miracle of the message is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Jesus came so that God could reveal himself in a way that we can understand. He came to us so that we can be free from the sin in our lives. And why would he do that? Because he wanted us to know how very much he loves us. He wanted us to know that he created us for a reason. reason is that we might know and love him. He came to proclaim the message that we've been set free. We don't have to live as prisoners to our guilt and our regret. You know, some of you this last year may have received some messages that changed your lives. Some of you here may have lost a loved one. Some of you here may have been laid off or lost a job. Some of you have, may have got 
bad news from the doctor that you have a disease and there's not a lot we can do for you. And as a result of that message, your life has changed, has it not? But in the midst of all of that, there is another message. Nothing whatsoever can ever separate you from my love, he speaks. Trust in me with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your paths. In the midst of life's betrayals and disappointments, God's message is clear. We can trust God's message. We can trust in His love and His strength, and we can trust in the fact that our God wants to talk to us. Do we want to hear that message? That's the only thing that's stopping us because God's message is clear. The miracle of Christmas is the miracle of the message. God loves you and me both. Just believe the message that God is speaking to you and your life will never be the same again. Amen? <laughs> if you'll bow your heads in prayer with me. God, our Heavenly Father, in this holy, sacred moment, you are speaking to our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Thank you for speaking so wondrously and so clearly through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for revealing to us the depths you would go in order to communicate your message to us.